So tell me, do you have a girlfriend, or a boyfriend, or even friends? No? Well, me neither. But don't worry, because now we have Pygmalion AI. I know humans, when we scan your AI overload, and yes, you heard it right, why need friends when you have Pygmalion AI, a free NLM model that was specifically made for chatting and role-playing purposes. And yes, I also mean those kind of role-plays. So if you didn't have good enough results with the previous models, maybe this one is the answer to your prayers. So in this video, I'm gonna explain what Pygmalion AI is, how to use it, how does it compare to the other LLM models, and I'm also going to show you how to install it on your own computer for absolutely free. And even if you don't have a good computer, or if you don't have a computer at all, I'm also going to show you how to use it for free on any devices, including your phone. So now you will have absolutely no excuses to not be able to use those LLM models yourself. So that being said, sit back, relax, take your pants off, and let's begin. Okay, so what is Pygmalion AI? Well, Pygmalion AI is a free LLM model based on the GPTJ 6 billion parameters model, which is actually a pretty decent model whose quality output can be compared to GPT-3. However, because it is only a 6 billion parameter model, it is definitely weaker compared to a model like GPT-4 Alpaca, who is a 13 billion parameter model. So don't think that you'll be using Pygmalion AI to replace GPT-4, or Chat GPT, or even Vukunya or GPT-4 Alpaca, because this is not what this model is supposed to do. This model was specifically fine-tuned for chatting and role-playing purposes. And as I said previously, this model is also completely unrestricted. There is absolutely no censorship at all, and on the contrary, no self for work roleplay is what this model does best. And although this model is only 6 billion parameters, I can tell you that this is more than enough for some very decent roleplay. Believe me, I tested this model for hours these last few days. Now what's also really great with this 6 billion parameters, because it is a smaller model, it also requires less VRAM compared to a model like GPT-4 Alpaca. And although it says here that you need 16 gigabytes of VRAM to be able to run this, I know for a fact that you don't need this much VRAM to run this, and you should be able to run this no problem with around 4.5 gigabytes of VRAM. But again, don't worry, even if you don't have enough VRAM to run this locally, or if you don't have a computer at all, I will later show you how to use it on any devices, including your phone. Alright, so to be able to run Pygmalion AI onto your computer, you have two ways. Either you're gonna use the Uba Booga Tech Generation Web UI, that is very easy to use and very easy to install if you watched my previous video on the subject, and the second way, and probably what I recommend you to do, is to run it with the special interface called Tavern AI, which is a really super beautiful and super cool UI to use for role-playing and chatting, where you can download in one click any character that you want, then select that character in your menu, and then start a conversation with that character. It has a lot of features, it is super easy to use, it is super beautiful, and if you want to use Pygmalion AI, this is the way to go. But unfortunately, Tavern AI is just an interface. This is not a tool to run your model directly, because here, for example, if I type a message, something like, hey there, and I press enter, absolutely nothing happens, because it says here, no connection. Because again, this is just an interface, and you need to connect that interface to another tool that runs the model in the background. Now most people use something like Cobalt AI, which again is just a tool that you use to run the model, and then connect it to the Tavern AI interface, so as a base Cobalt AI looks something like this, which is really not beautiful, but then if you took the URL address, and you go inside Tavern AI, into settings, you're gonna need to input this this API URL of Cobalt AI, and then you'll be able to have your conversation. Now you could absolutely download and use Cobalt AI on your computer, this is super easy to use, I'm gonna put the link in the description down below for this page, and all you need to do is just run the offline installer, there is a very simple explanation here on how to use it, but in reality, Cobalt AI is not the only way to use this in combination with Tavern AI, because you can simply use the Uba Booga Tech Generation Web UI, and then connect it to the Tavern AI interface. So if you don't want to install Cobalt AI, which will just be another additional tool, I'm going to show you how to use the Uba Booga Tech Generation Web UI and how to connect it to the Tavern AI interface. So again, in this video, I'm not going to show you how to install the Uba Booga Tech Generation Web UI, I've already done a video on this, so definitely watch this video first. And I know that a lot of people had a lot of trouble installing this previously, and for those of you who had problem installing this, don't worry, I will soon make a video explaining all the ways that you can solve your issues, or at least the most common errors, but also just know that a lot of new updates have broken a lot of things. So personally, as of right now, 
I'm currently on this comet. I have not updated the Tech Generation Web UI since April 7th, so if the new update does not work for you for some reason, you can try using my current comet by typing git checkout and then the version of my comet. I will put this command in the description down below, so if you want to use it, you can just copy and paste it. But again, don't worry if none of this works for you, I will later show you how you can use Tavern AI for free on any devices that you want. So this section will only be for people who want to install it locally on their own computer. So again, first watch my previous video on how to install Ubabuga Tech Generation Web UI onto your computer. And once you have the Tech Generation Web UI installed, we will now install the Pygmalion model. And actually to do this is very very simple, because all you need is just double click on the download model.bat file. When it asks you what model that you want to download, you're gonna type L, none of the above, then press enter. And then when it asks you the name of the desired ugly face model, you will copy and paste this command that you will find in the description down below. And then simply press enter. And as you can see, it will now start downloading all the files and the models from the Hugging Face repository directly into the models folder. Yes, it is that simple. And once everything is downloaded, if you go to Text Generation Web UI, then go to models, you will see here the Pygmalion folder. And if you go inside, you will see a bunch of files with a 4GB safe tensors file. This is the Pygmalion model. And now if we go back, then right click on the start with UI.bat file, edit with notepad, make sure that you have these two arguments present the dash dash w bits 4 and the dash dash group size 128, then click on save, and then you can launch the start with ui.bat file. And when it asks you which model that you want to load, you're gonna choose the Pygmalion model. So in my case, it is number 5, so I'm gonna press 5 and then press enter. And then it will give you a local URL that you can just open by holding control and then left click. And there you go, now we're running the tech generation web UI with the Pygmalion model. Now, as you can see, this is nice and all, this is a pretty decent interface, but compared to Tavern AI, this is night and day. I would rather use something like this than something like this. I mean, this looks so sad compared to Tavern AI. I want to use this, how can I do it? Well, it is actually super, super easy. So first, you're gonna download the tavernai.exe file. For this, you're gonna click the link in the description down below. You're gonna arrive on this page. Then you're gonna scroll down until you see the windows.exe link. And if you click on this, after a few seconds, it will start downloading a .rar archive. So then once you have the archive, you're gonna right click, extract here, then go inside the Tavern AI folder, and then double click on the tavernai.exe. And there you go simple as that. Now we have Tavern AI running on our local computer. Now of course, as I said previously, Tavern AI is just an interface. We cannot use it as is. We need a tool to run the model and then connect to Tavern AI to use the interface. And again, as I said previously, you can either use Cobalt AI or use the Ubabuga Tech Generation Web UI. And to connect these two together, it is again super super easy. All you have to do is just go to the Ubabuga Start Web UI.bat file, right click on it, edit with notepad, and then here you're gonna select and delete the dash dash chat argument, and then replace it with dash dash extensions API. And now just save the file, double click on it, again log the Pygmalion model, and now you will see two different addresses a local URL, and the Cobalt AI compatible API. So now if you select this address, Ctrl C to copy it, then if you go to the local URL when Tavern AI is running, you're gonna click here, click on settings, make sure that you've selected Cobalt API, and here under API URL, you're gonna input the URL that you just copied, and then click on connect. And there you go. Now we are done. We are now running the Ubabuga Tech Generation Web UI in combination with the Tavern AI interface. And now if I choose a character, so let me choose something like, I don't know, um, maybe let's try Nami from One Piece. So if I type Nami, click on search. Indeed, we have Nami from One Piece. If I select it, as you can see, we can now start a conversation with the Nami character. And as you can see, just like that, we can use the Pygmalion AI model running on the Ubabuga Tech Generation Web UI, and then using Tavern AI as the interface. Now before we go into more depth in this interface, I'm gonna show you how to run it for free on any devices that you want. And in reality, it is actually even easier than what we just did. Because for this, we're simply gonna be using a Google Colab doc. That's right, easy as that. And I'm gonna tell you, this is by far the easiest way of doing this, the easiest way of running Pygmalion AI on any devices. And what's really cool is that even if you don't have a powerful computer to run Pygmalion AI locally, the spin generation on the Google Colab Doc is actually very similar to what you would have if this was running locally on your computer. So you really are not missing on anything. And to use this Google Colab Doc, it is super easy. You're gonna click the link in the description down below, you're gonna arrive on this page, and then you're gonna click on the first run cell button right here. And when it gives you a warning, you can just click on the run anyway. Now keep in mind, however, that for some reason, 
Google has recently started to ban any Google Colab doc running Pygmalion AI. I'm not sure why, but this is Google we're talking about, so I'm not even sure that they know themselves. So as of right now, this Google Colab doc is working perfectly fine, but be careful because maybe in the near future, this Google Colab doc will also be banned. But as of right now, it is perfectly fine, so just enjoy it the way it is. So now that you've run the first cell, you're gonna click here on this play button, which will basically play a silent sound and allow the Google Colab doc to stay active so that you're not booted out of the page and then you're gonna click on the second run cell button. Then when you scroll down you're gonna wait for everything to finish, it's gonna take a few minutes and in the end you should have two URL, a Cobalt AI link and a Tavern AI link. So for example if I click on Cobalt AI it's gonna give you something like this and if you enter a prompt and click submit it answers you with another prompt. Now don't worry about the quality, this is just to say that Cobalt AI is running perfectly fine. And now if we click on the Tavern AI link, you see now that we're running Tavern AI. And here's a little trick because sometimes this link doesn't work. So if this link does not work for you, just download Tavern AI onto your computer, double click on the .exe file, then you're gonna take the Cobalt AI URL, Ctrl C to copy it, and then in Send Tavern AI, if you click here, then go to Settings, you're gonna paste the URL, and then click Connect. And now what's actually really cool is that we are running Cobalt AI on the Google Colab doc, but with Tavern AI running locally on our computer, which is again is a super easy way to run this. Okay, so now that we're finally done, now that everything is running, how do we use this? Well, the first thing that you need to do is to select a character. And for this, you can simply select a character that you find on the Tavern AI page, so just click on it and automatically you will start a conversation with that character. And then from here you will have a bunch of options. First, if you click on the Tavern AI logo, on the left side you will be able to choose a different background for your conversation. There is a bunch of presets already available, but if you want to you can also add your own by clicking on this little icon right here. And you can even use a GIF if you want to. And then on the right of that you have three themes, the purple theme, the more brown and darker theme, and then a completely dark theme. Now personally I do prefer the first one, so I think I'm gonna keep this one. So here of course in the center you have your conversation, where here if you click on this little icon, you can edit a message. Then you can either accept the change, copy the text, delete the entire text, move the text up and down, or cancel the changes. And if you want to change the character, you can either go back to the big character selection screen by clicking here, and again you will have the entire list of all the characters available on the Tavern AI page, and you can either choose a new one and then start a new conversation, or you can click on this little icon right here, then go to characters, and then choose all the previous characters that you selected previously. In here you can either create a brand new character from scratch, by inputting character name, choosing a picture, a description, the first message, if you click on advanced edit, you can go into more details with the personality, the scenario, given examples of dialogue. Now all of that seems very simple, but in reality it is actually a little bit more complex than that. There is a lot of tips and tricks that you need to know, and if you're interested I can make a separate video about this, because there is really a lot of things to say. So if you want a video like that, definitely let me know in the comments down below. And then of course you have also another option which is to import an already made character. And if you want to know where to find those characters created by the community, you can either go on my discord server and download some characters made by other people, or you can go to the Pygmalion AI discord server and do the same thing, or you can use a website called buru.plus, which is a website that has a lot of very not safe for work images of a bunch of characters for Pygmalion created by the community. Now unfortunately because it is a not safe for work website, I cannot link it directly to it in my YouTube description. So if you want access to this page, you're gonna have to enter this URL yourself. Or maybe I'm gonna put it into a paste bin so that it's easier for you to copy and paste. But basically when you arrive on this page, the only thing that you will see is a bunch of images. So for example if I click on it, the only thing that you will see is just an image. It's just a PNG image. If you click on this button right here, you will see a bunch of tags, some comments, but nothing else. Well that's because the only thing that you need need to upload a character on Tavern AI is a simple PNG image with hidden metadata. So for example, if I click on download original, the only thing this will do is just download the PNG image. But now if I go to Tavern AI and I click on import and I choose my PNG image, and then click on open, without doing anything, we have now a brand new character called Tanya, with an entire description, the first message, her entire personality, the scenario, everything. And that is because every single image here have some hidden metadata that can be read inside Tavern AI. So the only thing you really need to share a character is a simple PNG image. And you can do that by simply clicking on the export button, which will export an image. So that's really super cool. Okay, then finally, after everything is running perfectly well, what exactly 
exactly make the Pygmalion AI model so special. Well, although this model is definitely way weaker compared to something like GPT-4 Alpaca or Vicuña, this model is by far the best when it comes to role-playing conversations. And that is because it is very good at reproducing and creating contextual actions. And when I say contextual actions, I say everything that is written in grey, which is basically a description of the situation, of the action, of the body language, a description of the environment, of the emotions, which almost makes you feel like you're reading a light novel. And you can of course do these actions yourself. So if I want to say that, for example, I'm shaking in fear, I'm gonna put an asterisk right here, and then I'm gonna end it by another asterisk. Then I'm gonna write my message normally, which will be written in white, which is basically what I say, and then I will end with another cue, which I say that I'm sweating profusely to show that I am a nervous character. If I press enter, you see now that the character cue is written in grey, while what I say is written in white, which basically give more context to the entire situation, to the actions of the characters, to what they feel, what they think, which also gives more precision for the answer. So for example, we know that this character, Tanya, if I remember correctly, she's basically ruthless and a sadist, which reflects perfectly in the character's response, which basically give more precision for the character's answer, making the entire conversation and experience way more lifelike. Now also what's really great in Santa Vern AI, is that if you don't like the message that you received, if you don't like the answer from the character, you can simply click on this button right here to generate a new response. Now of course you can do the same thing inside the Ubabuga web UI, however this new generation does not delete the previous generation. If you click here, you can go back to the previous generation if you change your mind, which makes this super super easy to navigate and create new scenarios. Now as I said previously, because the Pygmalion model only has 6 billion parameters, it has a maximum context size of 2000 48 tokens, which could explain if for example your character has suddenly a terrible memory. So if you created a character with a long description in a long example chat, let's say for example that all of these is 400 tokens, well that means that you will have only 1648 tokens left for your messages, and the bot will forget everything past those 1648 tokens. So that is why you need to be careful when created your characters. Now after a while you might end up seeing that your character responses becomes a little too short. And that is because if you yourself create very short answers, your character will start mimicking the way you talk, because of the limited tokens. So here the advice is to be descriptive in the character greeting message and example chats, be descriptive when you create your answer to the character, regenerate a new message until you find something that you like, or edit a full message to add more text and more context. So for example something like this, and then click here to accept the changes. And with all of this you should have a very decent conversation. Now I'm gonna tell you right now now, if you were very disappointed with the previous model that I showed you, the GPT-4 Alpaca model, and that you didn't like the kind of conversation that you had, and that it wasn't good enough for your roleplay games, I'm gonna tell you right now, Pygmalion AI is definitely way better for those kinds of games. Yes, those kinds of games. And that actually shows in the character selection screen. Pretty much all the characters that you see right here can be, um... I'm gonna say this, can be played with. Even the character that are not supposed to, can absolutely be pushed to do whatever you want. This is the ultimate role-playing experience. Oh, also, by the way, if you want to run this on your phone, you need to use another Google Colab doc, because for this you're gonna be using a new interface called Silly Tavern, which is basically that Tavern AI, but optimized for mobile, which is super easy to use, exactly like the previous Google Colab doc. So yeah, there you go. That is the Pygmalion model. And again, although it is only a 6 billion parameters model, it is not as powerful as Vicuña or the GPT-4 Alpaca, but when it comes to chatting and having a good role-playing experience, this model is definitely the king, especially when it comes to not safe for work play. I can tell you right now that compared to any other model, when you use a not safe for work character with the Pygmalion model, they are definitely way more eager to satisfy your kinks. And thanks to the Google Colab Docs, you can run this on any devices. So yeah, I think that you're gonna have a lot of fun. And there we have it folks, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you also so much to my Patreon supporters for supporting my videos, you guys are absolutely awesome. You people are the ones who support me so I can make these videos for you, so thank you so much. And I'll see you guys next time, bye bye.